Kit Kat is one of the most popular chocolate bars in the world. We consume billions of them every year. But have you ever wondered what the filling of Kit Kat chocolates is made of? We visited one of the world's largest chocolate manufacturers to find out how over 7 million bars are made each day. Kit Kat has been a classic favorite among both kids and adults since the 1930s. It was introduced to the market in 1935 during the golden chocolate era. It consists of three layers of wafer and two layers of filling wrapped in chocolate, a delightful combination of crispy wafers in smooth milk chocolate. In the 1930s, chocolate prices dropped enough to become affordable for 90% of the population. This situation ignited the chocolate war among producers like Mars and Cadbury. The chocolate bar brand was acquired by Nestle in 1988 in the UK. One of Nestle's factories in York, which is responsible for producing over 7 million chocolate bars per day. In the UK alone, 1 billion bars are consumed each year, averaging around 1,900 chocolate bars consumed every minute. The factory is strategically organized in a way that all steps of the supply chain are located close to each other, except for cocoa trees and their harvesting. These factories receive large tons of cocoa and process the beans. The chocolate factory where Kit Kat chocolate is made is directly connected to the wafer factory that creates the crispy interior of the bar and the assembly factory where both the chocolate ingredients and wafers come together and are packaged, awaiting in a massive warehouse to be shipped. It all begins with the seeds of the cocoa tree. The cocoa beans mostly come from West Africa where harvesting takes place in March. The cocoa beans are sun-dried for about seven days and then shipped directly to the production site in York. Once the beans are in the factory, a three-hour process begins, consisting of cleaning, which allows the beans to be separated from dirt and husking, where a series of rollers crush the beans and release the cocoa seed. The transformation of the bitter beans into chocolate starts when they are thrown into a machine that vibrates the beans to break the husk and expose the fatty interior of the seed. This is known as pulp and is the part of the bean that holds all the chocolate flavor. Once the beans are broken, the husk and pulp are separated on vibrating filters. The longer and lighter husks remain on top of the filter and are removed, while the smaller and heavier pulps fall down. To bring out the flavor of the pulp, it is roasted in a giant roaster, similar to the one used for coffee. The exact time and temperature of roasting are the best kept secrets of chocolate manufacturers because controlling these two variables means controlling the taste. The cocoa is sent to the ovens, where pressure and heat will release the chocolate treasure, known as chocolate liquor. This chocolate liquor contains cocoa butter. After separating the cocoa butter and solids, the latter will be collected as cocoa powder that can be purchased in the supermarket. Cocoa butter is the fatty part, mixed with cocoa powder, along with sugar, milk, and vegetable fats, to create the chocolate we all love. Vegetable fats are used to reduce the cost of the product. The liquid is mixed with sugar and other ingredients inside a massive one-ton mixer until it becomes a sweet, thick, sandy chocolate paste. Once the ingredients are mixed, the process of perfection begins, a process called conching, which grinds the chocolate particles, allowing them to become smaller and provide a better texture. The best chocolates will have longer conching times to achieve the smooth and creamy texture of chocolate. The constant friction and heat generated between the mixture and the machine's paddles release even more flavor while smoothing the chocolate. The longer the chocolate is mixed, the creamier, tastier, and more expensive the result. At the end of this process, liquid chocolate is formed. Heating will raise the chocolate's temperature to ensure it melts and then reduce it to around 27 degrees Celsius. This reduces crystallization formation in the chocolate. Basically, crystallization is what you see in chocolate with a gray or dull layer, which makes the chocolate unappealing to consumers. And now we have the chocolate ready for Kit Kat bars.
Next, the focus shifts to the production of the wafer layers. Flour is mixed with water to create a dough that is transferred to molds, where the dough takes the shape of large wafer sheets. It is transported to large ovens at a temperature of 150 degrees, where the wafer is baked. Immediately after it cools down, it gets a layer of the filling for the wafer in between. This is done by covering one layer of wafer with the filling and placing it on top of another wafer. Finally, a layer of wafer covered without filling is added, like making a three-layer sandwich. And now, the secret of the filling is about to be revealed. To resemble a long and slim bar, the filling of a Kit Kat wafer is made from cocoa liquor sugar, and a small amount of crushed Kit Kat. Rejected Kit Kat bars are crushed into a paste, which is then used to fill the wafers of other Kit Kats. After 16 hours of mixing, this chocolate is ready to become chocolate bars. The machine fills 336 molds per minute, or over 200,000 chocolate bars per day. The chocolate is pumped into molds to create the exterior of the Kit Kat. The wafers are deposited inside the mold, and a final layer of chocolate covers them. In a cool environment, the bar is separated from the molds. A quick pass through the cooling tunnel hardens the chocolate. Once the bars are produced, quality controllers remove bars with any defects, such as bubbles or cracks. They crush them and mix them with chocolate to create the filling. Packaging is carried out immediately afterward, where automatically controlled robots handle the process. The machine works swiftly, wrapping the chocolate bars. A decorative wrapper is placed, and then the bars are ready to melt in your mouth. Whopping 7 million bars are produced per day. After the packaging, the Kit Kat bars are moved to a storage building, ready for shipment to supermarkets. The fully packaged Kit Kat bars are then transported to an on-site storage facility where they await orders. With each new order, the bars are moved to the loading area and dispatched to supermarkets and retailers, ready to be enjoyed by chocolate lovers all around the world. If you want to know how millions of McDonald's french fries are made, watch the video on your screen and please like the video if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel by activating the notifications to continue learning. Thanks for watching.